Hello, my name is Benjamin Mel, Regional Sales Manager for Gallagher Fluid Seals. Today we are going to begin a multi-part video series on the basics of O-rings. O-rings are the most common sealing product in the world. An O-ring is a versatile solution that will effectively seal every time, assuming that basic design parameters are followed. It is also an inexpensive sealing solution compared to other products. An O-ring should always be considered for a seal application due to its low price and availability. This video is going to cover the following topics. What is an O-ring? How does an O-ring work? How you measure an O-ring? What are the advantages of O-rings? What are the performance characteristics of an O-ring? What are the limitations of O-rings? And finally, we will explain various O-ring sizing systems and how they work. So, what is an O-ring? Terms that describe an O-ring are torus, donut, or circular profile. Most O-rings are solid, but they can also be hollow. The primary function of an O-ring is to prevent the loss of a fluid, liquid, or gas. This is most often accomplished through the pressure of the fluid squeezing the O-ring into the corner of the O-ring groove. O-rings are most commonly manufactured from an elastomer. The pliability of the material allows the O-ring to take the shape of its hardware. The hardness of the O-ring material should be considered relative to the pressure of the fluid. The higher the pressure, the harder the O-ring should be. We will discuss more about this when we discuss O-ring failure modes. The relationship between the O-ring and its mating hardware groove is very important. O-rings come in standard sizes. While there are many O-ring sizing standards throughout the world, in the United States, the AS568 sizing system is the most common. O-ring sizes are designed to fit into hardware dimensions. This relationship between seal and hardware ensures that the O-ring will perform as designed. The O-ring gland is typically machined into the hardware. The combination of the O-ring and the gland form the O-ring assembly. So, how do O-rings work? A rubber O-ring is designed to be a stable and robust component. Whether by mechanical pressure from the surrounding structure or by pressure transmitted through hydraulic fluid, the O-ring is squeezed within the gland to produce zero clearance and block the flow. This squeeze alters the circular shape of the O-ring and is an intentional design characteristic. The two independent surfaces that are being sealed have a small gap between them. The seal squeezes into this gap and prevents the fluid from passing between. This gap is called the extrusion gap, and depending on the size of the O-ring, the extrusion gap is part of the design of the O-ring gland and should be carefully considered. If you are unsure on the details of O-ring groove design, please contact a GFS engineer. Next, we will discuss how to measure an O-ring. When discussing the dimensions of O-rings, a dash size from a particular sizing standard will be referenced. An example would be a size dash 214 from the AS568 sizing system. We will explain the various sizing systems later in this series, but for now, Understand that the size called out has specific dimensions. A dash 214 O-ring made by different manufacturers in different materials will still have the same dimensions. The two critical dimensions for an O-ring are the inside diameter and the cross section. To measure an O-ring, lay it flat on a surface and do your best to ensure the ring is circular and measure the inside diameter. To measure the cross section, a caliper is the best tool. Measure in multiple places around the ring to ensure accuracy and consistency. You can see here a picture of an O-ring sizing tool. This has been developed to make it easy to confirm the AS568 size of an O-ring by dropping it on a cone and reading the size it falls next to. This cone will not work for very small or very large O-rings. So, what are the advantages of O-rings? There are a wide range of advantages that O-rings offer. The O-ring is an incredibly effective and versatile design. 
The wide range of materials and durometers, or hardness, allow for almost any combination of media and pressure to be effectively sealed within a standard O-ring gland. When we start talking about O-ring applications, we will talk about how O-rings can be used not only in static O-ring applications, but linear reciprocating and even rotating under specific conditions. O-rings are easy to install and require little to no maintenance over their installed life. If an O-ring were to fail, detailed failure analysis can be performed. Each type of failure leaves behind fingerprints for analysis. Gallagher engineers work with customers every day on properly specifying O-rings and in the rare event of a failure can work to help you better understand what can be done to correct the problem. Next, we will discuss O-ring characteristics and performance. Within the design and use of O-rings, there are some foundational statements that we feel are appropriate to discuss. These statements are true most of the time. However, the consequences of a seal failure can be severe. Seals should be designed with the aid of a GFS application engineer and should be tested within the equipment to validate performance. Within a properly designed and machined O-ring groove, an O-ring will effectively seal in a static application up to 5,000 PSI. Seals can be made to seal effectively between reciprocating pistons and cylinders at fluid pressures up to 5,000 PSI. There may be slight running leakage depending on the film forming ability of the hydraulic fluid. For applications with pressures higher than 5,000 PSI, Harder materials and the use of PTFE backup rings offer effective sealing performance. O-rings can be used between rotating members with similar results, but the dynamic surface speed must be kept low. O-rings must be radially compressed between the inside diameter of the seal groove and the cylinder wall for proper sealing action. For either static or dynamic O-rings under high pressure, the primary cause of seal failure is extrusion of the material into the hardware clearance gap. The major factors affecting extrusion are fluid pressure, seal hardness, and piston cylinder clearance. Dynamic seals may fail by abrasion against the equipment hardware. Therefore, the contacting surfaces should be properly polished for extended seal life. Moving seals that pass over ports or other surface irregularities while under hydraulic pressure are very quickly damaged and will fail prematurely. The shape of the seal groove is unimportant as long as it results in proper compression of the seal between the bottom of the groove and the cylinder wall and provides room for the compressed material to flow so that the seal is not solidly confined between metal surfaces. The seal may be housed in a groove cut in the cylinder wall instead of on the piston surface without any change in design limitations or seal performance. Friction of moving O-ring seals depends primarily on seal compression, fluid pressure, and contact area. The effects of materials, surfaces, fluids, and speeds of motion are normally of secondary importance. The effects of temperature changes on the performance of an O-ring depends on the material used. Synthetic rubber can be made for continual use at high or low temperatures. At extremely low temperatures, the seals may become brittle but will resume their normal flexibility without harm when warmed. Prolonged exposure to excessive heat causes permanent hardening and will render the seal useless. Chemical interaction between the seal and the hydraulic fluid may influence seal life favorably or unfavorably depending upon the combination of seal material and fluid. Excessive hardening, softening, swelling, and shrinkage must be avoided. O-rings are extremely dependable because of their simplicity and ruggedness. Static seals will seal at high pressure despite slightly irregular sealing surfaces. Even when broken or worn excessively, 
SEALs may offer some measure of flow restriction for emergency operation. Irregularly shaped hardware can be sealed both as static and dynamic applications. So, what are some O-ring limitations? An O-ring is an incredibly effective and versatile sealing solution. While no claim is made that an O-ring will serve best in all conditions, the O-ring merits consideration for most seal applications except an environment completely incompatible with any elastomeric material, such as extremely high temperatures, or inefficient hardware to support an O-ring groove. Next, we are going to discuss dimensional standards. O-rings are measured by their dimensions, specifically their inside diameter and cross-section, but O-rings can also be referenced by their size within a specific O-ring sizing system. These standards exist to make communication easier, so that rather than specifying specific dimensions, a dash size can be utilized and everyone will know what is being referenced. In the United States, the U.S. Aerospace Size Standard for O-rings, AS568, is the most common. While the standard references aerospace, this standard is used across all industries. The AS568 standard specifies the inside diameters, cross sections, tolerances, and size identification codes or dash numbers for O-rings used in sealing applications. This sizing chart is available for download from GFS and specifies the O-ring dash sizes and their specific dimensions and tolerances. An example of a dash size would be a 214 or an 010. Occasionally, you will see these dash sizes preceded by a 2 dash. For example, a 2 dash 214 or a 2-010. This is specific to Parker Hannifin and is not part of the official size standard, but is common. The AS568 size standard groups O-rings by their cross-section and assigns each cross-section a series. There are five series within the standard, 0 series, 100, 200, 300, and 400 series. Each series has an increasingly larger cross-section value. Within each series, the dash sizes start small and increase one dash size at a time until the end of the series. Each consecutive dash size represents a larger inside diameter. A 245 O-ring has the same cross section as a 210, but the 245 has a larger inner diameter. The 900 series within the AS568 standard was designed for straight thread tube fitting boss gaskets. These O-ring sizes are commonly used within the valve industry. Other international sizing standards exist beyond the U.S. AS568 system. O-rings are often called out by their metric dimensions. An example would be a 16 mm ID by 3 mm cross-section. The two critical dimensions of inside diameter and cross-section give you enough information to identify the O-ring. The JIS B2401 Japanese Standard, British BS1806, and German DIN 3771 all reference specific size O-rings by their dash size. These tables are all available for download from GFS. It is possible that an O-ring called out by specific metric dimensions is a dash size for an international sizing system like JIS or DIN 3771. I hope you found this first video on O-Ring Basics helpful. Look for additional videos as the series continues. We will be discussing specific O-Ring materials, applications, failure modes, and other topics. Please reach out to a GFS application engineer with any questions or O-Ring issues you may be facing. These products are available for sale on the GFS website. Take care and thank you very much for your time.